what's up? Sean here, and I'm here today to talk about the Flying V-shaped guitar. This is an Epiphone Karina Flying V-shaped guitar, and I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of the Flying V shape, and should you buy one. The Flying V was released alongside the Explorer, and they were made out of Karina wood, a trademarked name for Limba, a wood similar to but lighter in color than mahogany. They wanted to give a futuristic design to Gibson's image, and they initially did not sell well, so they were basically discontinued a year later, then brought back in 1963, then basically permanently brought back in 1967 to the present day. Both Gibson and Epiphone create the Flying V guitars and they still release them to this day. And there's a lot of other companies that have kind of taken that design and they've straight up either just copied it or released their own little modern, more heavy metal looking version of the Flying V guitar. So I said I was gonna talk about the pros and cons of this guitar. The first thing, that could be either a pro or a con, depending on if you like Gibson or not in the modern day. And I know a lot of people like them and a lot of people hate them. They're a very polarizing company in the modern day is that this is definitely a Gibson guitar. This one's an Epiphone, but it's basically based off the Gibson. It has the 24.75 scale. It has two humbuckers, very, very Gibson. And that could be a pro or a con too. I'll let you decide on that one. And now to what I think most people will consider a pro of this guitar, and that is its instant eye-catching design. This guitar looks cool, and considering the musical landscape in 2018, I haven't seen that many popular players play Flying V guitars. And I think if you brought this out to a local club or a local show, and you plugged this in, a lot of people would turn their heads. Another pro of this guitar for me is the weight. And I think that has to do a lot with the Karina wood. When I'm standing up with this guitar, it's really well balanced, and it's not overly heavy like a Les Paul, because for me, Les Pauls, a lot of people like the heaviness to the because it gives them sustain but i really don't like guitars that are 10 plus pounds this is very comfortable this is literally sg weight and now to a few of the prominent flaws on this guitar and one of the cons of this guitar for me and i think most people would agree this is a con but some people view this a little bit more optimistically is actually back to the design of the guitar if you want to play this guitar sitting down you have to play it classical style which means the bottom wing of this guitar has to kind of go under your leg and unfortunately, that's also where the input jack sits. So that's actually not very comfortable on your leg and it can start rubbing up against the underside of your leg and you won't be happy about that. Um, it even goes to the point of where on this Epiphone 1958 limited edition release, they have a rubber pad right here. So you can attempt to play it right here. But for me, I'm wearing chinos right now. And if I try to play it like this, it's just gonna keep, even with a rubber pad, it's just gonna keep on sliding down over and over again. Then I'm gonna use my arm on the upper wing to see if I can hold it up, and you really can't, so you have to go to the classical style. And a lot of people really like the classical style, and maybe they, you know, they start off playing classical style, so that's natural for them, but I feel like a lot of guitarists will not like that. This next con is pretty important, but it's pretty under the radar, and I had to do a lot of form research on this, because I have this problem with my Flying V, and that's where the area, I wouldn't call it a heel, but the area where the body meets the neck, on the base side, where you can see where it meets, there's a lacquer crack here, and a lot of people get that on their flying Vs. And for me, it's definitely aesthetic. It's definitely an eyesore, but it also has an effect of the playing. But seeing as many flying V players have this crack, it's probably a design flaw, and I just want to point that out to you before you buy one. So on to the next topic, should I buy a flying V guitar? And I'm going to be a little bit less analytical here. Hell yeah, you should buy a Flying V guitar. These things look cool. You look like a badass on stage. You look cool rocking out. They sound great plugged into a Marshall Origin or whatever amp of choice you got. These are super cool. Yes, you should buy one if you can afford one. Do it. And that comes to the end of the video. Take care, guys. Mm -hmm.